time is short. What is your life? It's even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. If I told, if someone had told me when I was 20 years old that life was very short and would pass just like that, I wouldn't have believed it. And if I tell you that, you don't believe it either. I cannot get young people to understand how brief life is, how quickly it passes. It seems like yesterday I was in school. Every one of us here has been given the same amount of time in a day. 1,440 minutes a day, 168 hours per week. The days of our years are three score years and 10. And if by reason of strength there are four score years, yet is there strength, labor, and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we have passed away and cut off. Seventy years God allows us. And it's interesting to me with all of our medical science, we've never passed that magic mark. The average American male today lives 70 years and four months. The average female 73 years and six months. More people live to be 70, but the average age of an American is still 70 as taught in the scriptures. Now 70 years God allows us. Let's think a moment, what do we do with those 70 years? The first 15 are spent in childhood or the tw and then 20 years we sleep. And then the last five years, physical limitations are curtailing your activities. They haven't curtailed mine yet, but I, I, my fifth year till 70 starts next year. Only 30 years left. And part of that time must be spent in eating meals, working, and figuring out your income tax, things like that. Now is the accepted time. The things we ought to do, the classes we ought to take, the books we ought to read, do it now. The family that needs you, spend more time now. Write that letter home now that you've been meaning to write. Money you ought to give, give now. Time for study, do it now. People you ought to witness to, do it now. Every time the clock ticks, it seems to say now. Today, if you will hear his voice. There is the category of problems in life, and it ain't going anywhere. And so the question is, can you deal with the whole category at the same time? That's the thing, that's how to be in the world, is to deal with that category all at the same time. And so how did, how did human beings, what did they come up with as a solution? And that's so cool too, because the solution they come up with, not only was the heroism that allows you to approach what you're terrified by and what you find offensive, and to learn from it, but also the idea of sacrifice, and, and that was played out by cultures everywhere, including human sacrifice. And you think, what the hell was up with those crazy bastards so long ago? They were sacrificing to gods all the time. What kind of clueless behavior was that? Burn something and please God. Burn something valuable and please God. It's like, what was with them? What were they thinking? Well, they weren't stupid, those people. If they were stupid, we wouldn't be here. They were not stupid. And believe me, they lived under a lot harsher conditions than we do. So those were some tough people, man. You know. Back then, you'd last about 15 minutes, and so you don't want to be thinking of your ancestors as stupid. Like, there's no real evidence that we're much different cognitively than we were 150,000 years ago. So, anyways, sacrifice. What does that mean, sacrifice? Well, it's a discovery, man. It's the discovery of the future. It's like the future is actually the place where there is threat, and it's always going to be there. So what do you do? You make sacrifices in the present so that the future is better. Start before you're ready. If you wait until you feel ready to do anything meaningful, you're going to be waiting for the rest of your life. Among the people who are the most successful, the happiest, the people who are actually contributing the most, they all have one thing in common, and it's this. They all start before they're ready. You see, 
I think you've misidentified the enemy here because the enemy, it's not making mistakes. It's not changing your mind and the enemy is not your fear. The only enemy that you need to defeat, my friend, is not getting started. This is what most of us just fail to realize. Action is the antidote to fear. Action creates progress and momentum. And action, consistent action, is all you ever need to make anything happen in your life. It's all back down to a very primitive mindset of we just have to do. It's like breathing. Breathing becomes normal. Like, we don't even know that, that, that we're doing it. That's how you have to live your life. When that alarm clock goes off at four or five in the morning, your mind says no. You just say, this is what we do. It's what we do now. Because to get to where you wanna go, the amount of pain involved, I'm not saying physical, I'm not saying you gotta break yourself off, the amount of mental pain of how many times you're gonna have to do something that you don't want to do to get to where you want to go. There's gonna be more times you do something that, that you don't wanna do than you are gonna wanna do it. And that's, that, that's your new norm. That's your new norm. So then it's like breathing. And then once you do this over and over and over again, it becomes like breathing. I don't wanna live this lifestyle, but to get to the other side of this, I have to. You're never, ever, ever, ever going to feel like doing the things you need to do in order to have what you want. You're always going to need to push yourself. You're always going to need to parent yourself. So what is the net advice on this? What, what is the bottom line? The bottom line is no one's coming. No one. No one's coming to push you. No one's coming to tell you to turn the TV off. No one's coming to tell you to get out the door and exercise. Nobody's coming to tell you to apply for that job that you've always dreamt about. Nobody's coming to write the business plan for you. It's up to you. And because you're only ever going to do the things that you feel like doing right now or that feel good right now, unless you understand that you've got to parent yourself, you gotta push yourself, you're not gonna make your dreams come true. You're just not. We're not wired that way. You weren't born that way, you weren't that way when you were growing up, and you're certainly not that way as an adult. And there's a tremendous amount of liberation that comes when you accept the fact that you're always going to need to give yourself a push. People want to know how to stop the laziness and they want to know how to stop the procrastination. They have some idea in their head, you know, some kind of a, a vision of what they want to do. But they don't know where to start. They don't know where to start it, you know? They don't know where to start. And so they say, hey, where do I start? And, and when's the best time to start? And I have a very simple answer for that. Here. And now, that's it. You, you want to improve? You want to get better? You want to get on a workout program or a clean diet? You want to start a business? You want to write a book or make a movie or build a house or a computer or put together some mobile application? Where do you start? You start right here. And when do you start? You start right now. You initiate the action aggressively. You go because the idea isn't going to execute itself and, and the book isn't going to write itself and the, the weights out in the gym, they're not going to move themselves. You have to do it and you have to do it now. And that means you got to stop thinking about it and stop dreaming about it and stop researching every aspect of it and reading all about it and debating the pros and cons of it. Just start doing it. Take that first step and make it happen get after it and get after it here and now